Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure Plus. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto had a power of Crimson Moon? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. A long blonde haired boy that he has it tied in a high ponytail as he looked over the small boat he is currently right on. He was not alone on the small row boat as he with a few black dressed black swordsmen with a symbol of Kiri on their shoulders. However some of these people were not just men as three of the people were women. These people looked back to the blonde haired boy who looked to be the age of 14 in their eyes. He wore a black Konoha sleeveless shirt that went up to his neck and a matching color hakam. The boy also wore a pair of long fingerless gloves that went up half his arm. Along with a black face mask that covered his face with the exception of his cold ocean blue eye. This blonde had on an ash black howry that hung off his shoulders. A. N. On his feet, think of what Soi Fan wears on her feet in bleach. Just then a red haired 18 year old woman made her way to the blonde as she took a seat to him and smiled at him kindly. I never would have guessed that Hitakari Batuse would be fighting alongside of me. I am merely fighting alongside you, because I have no other use than being an assassin," replied the blonde teen as he looked over the dark waters of the night as he saw similar boats like theirs. However he did not see the look the woman gave him as it looked like one of pity. If we are successful in this raid on the enemy supply lines, then within a few weeks the shinobis that are loyal to the Mizukage will be in poor health to continue the war, Turumi Dono. You know you can call me Mei, Naruto-kun said the woman who is now named as Terumi Mei, leader of the rebel faction of Kiri Shinobi. Besides we have been fighting together for a little over a year. If it that is your wish then, replied Naruto as he held a strange looking pendant that he wore. It was a clear looking orb with a deep blue crystal within the orb, while some metal that spiraled down from the orb was in some sense a very beautiful silver. What will be the next course of action after destroying their supply line Mei Dono? Mei then looked out to her men who then turned their attention to their leader as she stood up on the boat. Once the supply lines have been destroyed in this night raid, we will be switch our tactics from offensive to a defensive battles for at least a few days. Once the troops learn the news of their supplies being cut off from them, I am sure that they will most likely go into a defensive actions for our troops. This is where the battle gets tricky because the village will be covered by mist as the Junins will most likely use this as cover to take down out numbers while at the same time makes us confused and we might be killing our people with that jutsu. Everyone on the boat had a look of confidence on their faces after hearing their leader's plan. One however had an impassive look as he saw they were nearing the supply ships as he placed his swords under his belt. After rebel forces had successfully completed their mission in raiding the supply ships. As they had taken all the provisions that were being stored inside the ships before burning them down. They had a few ninjas who would be recognized their traits in battle or jutsus they had used. However one person had stood out from the ninja who were part of Terumi Mei's faction and he was not seen as a ninjas like most in the elemental countries. But he was seen as teen who left a path of blood before him with his sword as he charged into the heart of his enemies. As he fought with battle after battle without the fear of dying seen on his face or if there was even a fear to begin with. For those who had lived through a battle with the blonde swordsman by some miracle would have told others that he fought like a demon or the a war god. As the blonde was capable of taking out multiple groups of nins with a single strike of his sword. XXXXX two months later, bridge in Kiri. Naruto had dashed forward onto the bridge that leads to the remaining forces of loyal Kiri ninjas has started throwing every projectile weapon they had. At the blonde swordsman who charged forward as he struck down every weapon that flew towards him with his sword. Until finally he had broken through and with the mastery of his sword had begun to cut through his enemies without mercy. Limbs were sent flying away from the bodies that they were originally attached to. As screams of pain could be heard whenever the blonde had slashed through the flesh of the Kiri ninjas. Blood had spilled into the river below the bridge from the dead bodies that had either fell into the water or flowed down from the supports that held the bridge in place. The blonde swordsman did not stop his path of blood as he kept pressing his advance through his enemies. However just when a few of the Kiri Nins seemed to have gotten the strength to get back on their feet to join the battle. The found themselves to be cut down from behind or burned alive. Man what they said about the kid in Japan is true. Said Chojuru as he looked at the dead bodies that littered the ground on the other side of the bridge. 
I don't even think that we of the Kiri no Shinobigatana Nananan Shu could be near that kid's level of swordsmanship. Don't say such things Chojuru, said Mei as she came from behind one of the members of the Seven Swordsmen. I know you're always putting yourself down by comparing yourself to others. But look at this way. You have your own strengths that Naruto-kun does not have and the same could be said for him. Says Mei as she saw her loyal companion smile at her for the kind words. Mei sama we better catch up to Naruto. Said Chojuru as he saw his leader nod her head in agreement as they ran forward. With Naruto Naruto found himself nearing the top of the Kiri's cage tower as he left a trail of blood along with limbs. He then walked to the doors that lead to the Mizukage's office being guarded by two of their Anbu as they were sweating in fear. At seeing the famed Hiktokuri Batuse himself walking up to them with his sword covered in red liquid of his enemies. Move aside. Or die. Said the Batuse in a monotone voice that sounded devoid of any human life as he raised his sword. We are not going to let you kill the Mizukage. Said the Kiri Anbutu on the left as his voice still had pride at the teenager in front of him. We both are prepared to die to defend our awe. The Anbu was cut off before the guard on the right had stabbed him through the heart with his tonto. T the Miezuk cage is you up a ahead. Stuttered the Anbu guard who is in fear for his life. J just p please s spare m my. Was the last words before Naruto had cut the mon's head off. Naruto had looked at the body of the man he had just killed a few seconds ago before turning his back. I cannot stand traitors more than anything in life. Watch it kit. Said the soothing voice of the blonde's prisoner. I can sense that annoyingly know it all Sanbi in that room and it will take one of your stronger attacks to defeat his vessel. So you know what will happen if he dies. I understand. Replied Naruto as he pushed the doors open to see a bow with dirty blonde hair with pink eyes looking back at him with a impassive glare. The boy looked about the same age as himself, in looks, as he carried a very long sword on his back. Something is different about this person. Do you have any ideas Kyubi Dono? Though the blonde as he waited for a moment for his answer which was a gasp. Blasted that Gaki is being controlled by another. Said Kyubi as she saw three faint black marks around his pupil. RRRR. Damn Uchiha's using this stupid mind control of theirs. However I can smell that bastard scent on him. Uchiha Madara. Then I must use that to break the genjutsu. Asked Naruto as the nine-tailed queen gave a defeated sigh of annoyance. We got no choice in the matter, Kit. Though it annoys the hell out of me that you posses it in Jean by a shard. Said Kayubi as she watched the even take place through her vessel's eyes. After watching the blonde break the genjutsu off the Sanbi Jinchuriki before using one of his strongest kenjutsu skills to knock the dirty blonde out. She then saw a few bubbles enter the room of the scene as her eyebrow twitched. Late as usual Rokubi. Oh it's already over and here I made an effort to help you. Said a sarcastic voice from the bubble that floating in the room. As it had burst once it landed on the ground to reveal a man with shoulder length black hair. Wearing a blue kimono that had a light orange sash around the waist. So is he dead? No. Just knocked out. Replied Naruto as he sheathed his sword. This one here is not a normal nin by any standards Yukataka. Just like the both of us. From this the man named Yukataka had his eyes widen at the blonde's words as he looked from the two. So you mean ease. A jinchuriki. Said Mei as she came into the office with Chojuru. I had my suspicions about Yugura and it looks like you proved it Naruto-kun. So what will you do now? Asked Naruto as he saw Mei went into a thinking pose. Well the first thing to do is to call of the bloodline purge as a must. Said Mei as everyone agreed with her. After that we are going to have to build up Kiri's forces back to normal once again. Which could take quite a while after this civil war is finally. But for now. I am going to give the troops a few days to rest before we set things in motion. But tomorrow I will hold the ceremony of my being the new Mizukage. Chojuru then looked to the blonde swordsman who turned his back to the group. So what will you do Naruto? The blonde did not give a reply to the man as he just left the room. Next day Naruto stood among the crowd of people that were looking up at the top of the balcony of the Mizukage's tower. He had listened to Terumi Mei's speech on how to fix their lands back to their former glory. Along with the immediate stop of the bloodline purge once as she had showed evidence that Yagura was being controlled and had no sense of his actions in his rule. He saw people were looking a bit unsure of the words that Mei had said about the former cage. However it was then that Yugura who spoke personally about how monstrous his crimes were to the people loved more than his own life. 
Some of the shinobi looked at the Jinchuriki as they saw the Yugura they had known before the bloodline purge. Yugura then told everyone that he would work hard to gain the people trust once more again. Naruto then heard a few people saying that it would be a hard thing to do when it was he who ordered the deaths of good people, but decided to give him Yugura the benefit of the doubt on gaining their trust. I know that through all the hard work of our people in this war, said Mei as she looked at her people. Tomorrow I will hold a funeral to our fallen ninjas in both paying respects and giving our thanks for their hard work. This had gotten nods of approval on the people of Kirigakure no Sato as they understood what their new cage meant. But I would like to give a special thanks for one person in general," Mei said as she looked into the crowd looking for the blonde swordsman. Because it if were not for him along with those who fought alongside me, then we would not have won this war and peace would still only be just a dream. So thank you Uzumaki Naruto. Everyone had looked around to see where this person that their cage was talking about. But found that no one made any sort of movement of recognition. From this May had figured that the blonde did not want to be troubled for any kind of reward or anything that would that of glory. Because she had come to think that Naruto was being modest about such things as fame or riches that most shinobi look for in their villages. However Naruto was more of a samurai than a ninja as he was in fact the legendary Hitakuri Batuse. Naruto was walking down the dirt road to the one of many ports that are leaving to the mainland or somewhere away from Kirigakure. Once the war was finally over in the village, he found himself in a place where he did not truly belong with as he was a person who lived by the sword. Then any ninja in the elemental countries who carried a sword for the means of protecting their village and loved ones. He was a person who either fought on the front lines of battle or stalked his targets from the shadows. However he had stopped walking when heard a few mixed voices saying, Naruto, hearing his name being called made the blonde turn around to find the people he fought with catch up to him or none other than Terumi Mei the new Mizukage. Chojuru of the Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Nanan Shu, Utakata Kiri Jinchuriki of the Rokubi no Namakuji, and Yugura Jinchuriki of the Sanbi no Kame stop in front of him. Were you planning on leaving without saying goodbye? said Mei as she looked at the blonde in front of her as he still had an impassive look on his face. There is no reason for me to remain in Kiri since the war has finally ended Mei Dono, Naruto said in his cold and monotone voice as he looked at the ninjas of Kirigakure. Geez, even when all the fighting is over you're still the same. Yutakata said as he then gave a friendly smirk to his friend or thought of as a friend at the time. Still a cold-hearted Teme. Even when you got someone as hot as our new leader coming out here to see you oof. Yutakata was cut off by Chojuru who hit the man on the top of his head with his fist. Can't you ever be serious for once in your life? Said the Kiri swordsman as he let out a sigh. So I take it you're not going to change your mind on staying Naruto. I have never once stayed in one place for long during the battles in Japan," said Naruto as he told because the times of war did not seem to end there. I would only bring more bloodshed if I were to stay in your village once the other nations found out that Hitakuri Batuse was a ninja here and the same could be said for anywhere I would go to. I would like to thank you for setting me free Naruto-san," Yugura said as he stepped forward with a kind-hearted smile on his face. You do not have to thank me Yugura-san," replied the blonde swordsman. I do not wish to see others being used as puppets as it is a cruel means for the person who cannot break free. Just as Naruto had turned his attention to the red-haired Mizukage, he found himself being pressed between her s as the Utakata had just snickered at the blonde's misfortune, while the other members of the group, minus Mei herself, just watched as the woman began to press him even more sun into her bust, while the male Kiri Anbu had muttered out something along the lines of, Lucky Teme only for the three males to save Naruto from being smothered to death by the cage. Mei then took a few moments to gather her train of thought before smiling at the blonde. If it means anything at all Naruto-kun. I want you to keep the Kiri Hida 8 with you and know that you will always have a home to return to. Whenever you feel like coming back to us alright. To this Naruto had closed his eyes for a few moments before opening them to the Kiri ninjas. As he did something they thought they would never see from the blonde swordsman. He pulled his face mask down and smiled. Thank you, he said before he went back on his path again. XXXXX a week and a half later Naruto had been led off the ship from Kiri on a patch of land in the south that was not a part of Hai no Kuni. However it seemed that he had stumbled on or the outskirts of Takumi no Sato. A place where people had forged their own weapons with any kind of attribute of any element. Though the blonde had found this to be a very interesting at the time in thinking that he can have a weapon made for himself. 
However that fought soon to an end as he found that word had spread about his part in the Kiri rebellion and had a bounty on his head for more than 99 billion yen. He had came to the conclusion that many of the shinobi nations with the exception for Kirigakur, would rather want his person dead than be their enemy in the future. Naruto found himself with a feeling of uncertainty as he seemed to be the most wanted man in all the elemental nations now. So he had decided to avoid large villages for the time being as he did not want to attract unwanted attention to himself. However just as he was about to cross into the lands of Hai no Kuni, Naruto found himself confronted by a woman with green shoulder-length hair with a few yellow bangs in the front. She wore a full battle dress with the skirt stopping at a few inches below her thighs. With a pair of matching black long knee-high ninja boots and a match-color gloves, she also had on some fishnet arm warmers that went past her elbows and a sleeveless cloak that had a fur trimming on the high collar. But what caught the blonde's eye was the dual swords she carried in her hands as the blades were light blue, from the first slashes of her swords that produced a deadly gust of winds for the opponent. Naruto had guessed that she is from Takumi no Sato. The woman had introduced herself as Kujaku of Takumi no Sato as she wanted to test her weapon the Soshokan in battle. However what the one thing she had not realized one thing. As she was face to face with Hitakari Batuse until it was too late. After being defeated by the blonde she had asked the reasons why she had lost to him with her newly made swords and he answered with. Though your swords display power. But it is the person who wields the sword who must be one with their weapon. From that point Kujaku found herself to be confused on why she made such a weapon that was powerful. But was not strong enough to bring down the legendary Hitakari Batusai. So she had decided to follow the blonde to know what the meaning of his words meant about the sword. XXXXX days later Naruto with Kujaku had traveled D into Hai no Kuni as she had her sword holstered on both her hips as they say stopped in a poor looking town. The two had went to the inn so that they could rest for the night before moving on. However they had some news that some bandits nearby had been taking women along with the kids to make slaves for money. Kujaku had listened in on the conversation with her blonde companion as she then became angered, when they said that Konoha would only send a few ninjas to defeat the bandits had been captured by their numbers and would send another team to retrieve the team. After finishing their drinks the blonde had walked up to the people who were talking about the Konoha ninjas being captured. Excuse me, said Naruto to one man at the table, but could you tell me the details of the location to where these bandits have taken both your people and the Konoha ninjas? Why? Answered the man gruffly as he did not even look up from his drink. You want to go getting yourself killed if captured too. No I am going there to end the lives of those people. Replied Naruto. Peefed. Kid you must have some death wish you want to go there. The man was about to answer when he finally looked up from his drink to see cold blue eyes. Long sun ed blonde hair that is tied up in a ponytail along with a face mask that obscure anyone's sight. The man had never felt more fear than the bandits could ever do to their town. Why you're him, aren't you? Asked the man who stuttered out his words in making everyone in the bar look to see why he was so frightened. Hitakari BB Batuse. Sighs. That damn bingo book. Kujaku said in an annoyed voice. I think traveling will be more difficult now that you are on the list Naruto. Naruto had turned his attention to Kujaku who stood beside him for the moment. As he felt someone grasp the legs of his hakama in a very tight grip and when he looked around. The blonde swordsman saw that the man he was talking to is now on his knees. Please I beg of you. But please save our town from these bandits. It had taken us at least five years to raise the money to hire the ninjas from Konoha. But they only sent a group consisting of children to help us rescue our people and by now they too have been captured. However I fear that these bastards may have either sold our children and women to other nations by now. Please I beg of you to help us. Do you have the location of their hideout? Asked Naruto. So we're going to help them out. Said Kujaku as she placed her hand on her sword holsters. Looks like our first battle together against some weaklings. It will be a battle of numbers I assume. Asked the blonde who looked at the man who was on the floor. Yes. Replied the man. You two are going against at least over 200 bandits and I pray that you will save us. XXXXX bandit hideout. Night. Kuranai had mentally berate herself in thinking that her team was strong enough to accept a C-class mission. That it now turned into a S-class mission because these bandits had talked about selling her student to Kumo and she knew that Kumogakure would do anything to get their hands on the Byakugan. However her only hope was that the messenger bird made it to the Hokage in time to send back up. 
the she could do a single-handed genjutsu to make herself to have escaped from their cells as a guard would walk into the cell to see how she escaped. So when she found the right opportunity, she would strike the guard down. However in doing that it would give her her team the impression that she abandoned them to save her own life. Along with the fact, that even if they had to free themselves, they would be up against 200 bandits to escape and even if they managed to make it through to safety, the people that hired them would suffer the most because the mission would be a failure. Kuranai then heard footsteps coming down to the cells where they along with the people of the nearby town is being held. As three people came into the her sites, two being men and one being a woman as they had grins on their faces, good news, says the lady on the right side of their leader, it looks like one of you won't be staying for long as Kumo is will to free one of you, she said as wide grin appeared on her face as she was looking at Hanada. however I think that Chukichi here wants to give them an early present before we take you to the borders of Kaminari no Kuni. The members of Team 8 did not need a second to know what the woman meant as they began to struggle through their binds to save their teammate. However a voice had cut in from the shadows as the man known as Chokijihi stepped forward into Hanada's cell. You are Hisoka Chukichi the leader of the bandits that have been terrorizing the nearby town. Aren't you? said the voice who came out of the shadows to reveal long blonde sun-ed hair in a ponytail. A face mask that hid everything but his cold blue eyes that had the look of a killer. He wore it all back on his body with an ash black howry that hung off his shoulders. And just who the hell are you? demanded the female bandit as she shinned a light at the blonde teen to get a better look. Now you will pay for your crimes, replied Naruto in his monotone voice. Chukichi snorted at the teen arrogantly, it's just a brat playing hero. Stand back, boss yelled the man on the left of Chukichi as he pulled out a small sickle s he began to charge the blonde teen. Now d-i-i-i-i-e-e, -E, he yelled as he brought down his weapon. Only for the blonde to raise his sheathed sword and block the attack with the handguard of his sword. Before using the sheath's lower end to hit the man in his left eye to stop a following attack. Then faster than the eye could even blink, the blonde had drew the sword from the sheath and cut his opponent in half as blood splattered on the ground before screaming in untold pain. You damn brat, said the bandit woman as she drew her own weapon, before Chukichi pushed her to the side saying, it's me he wants, as he was about to bring out his own weapon. Only for the prisoners to see the blonde swordsman to stab the man named Chukichi under his mouth to the top of his head, then to forcibly to pull out his sword through the bandit leader's face, before going on the attack to female bandit that is still alive as she watched the horror of her leader death. The blonde then raised his sword up to his face before turning the blade to show the blood of her friend dripping down. Drop your weapon, the blonde said as the blade glowed a little. Never, she yelled as she charged forward to the blonde only for him to sidestep her as she ran past him, before cutting her in the right shoulder as her own blood spilled out onto the ground. However she moved to strike the blonde from the side in hopes to wound him somehow. However he moved faster than she as he did what she intended to do at her. The leaf ninjas watch the horror of the woman who was being killed slowly at the hands of a blonde teenager. Kernai had watched the female bandit began to charge at the blonde once more. Only the swordsman to vanish from her sight and to reappear behind the bandit before more blood shot out from the woman's chest area as she fell to the ground still being alive barely. The masked blonde then walked over the barely alive bandit before stabbing her through the neck and twisting his blade to make sure she was dead. After cleaning blood that is covering the sword another person had walked into the prison. To see a woman holding dual sky blue double edged swords as she walked next to the blonde to whisper something into his ear. It can't be. Kuranai said to herself but got the attention of everyone in the prison as she went over his looks. It's Hitakari Batuse himself. Hearing this made her students go pale at the blonde swordsman. Because they too heard the stories of the blonde swordsman who fought in the state of war called Bakamatsu, an island known as Japan, and from what they had just witnessed this one night. The stories did more than just prove their knowledge of him. Naruto had then taken the keys off the body of Hisoka Chukichi, who lay dead on a puddle of blood. He then walked over to the prisoners who were from the nearby town who were frightened at him. Kazuma Akiyoshi had sent us to save you, said Naruto as he saw a 12 year old boy walk forward from the crowd. My two san sent you? asked the boy who got a nod from the two sword wielders. Yes, I had told him that I would help with the promise of staying in your town for a few days, answered Naruto as he looked at Kujaku for a moment. Nothing more, nothing less. Now we must leave this area before more bandits come back or if any survivors are still able to fight, 
said the blonde as he looked to his companion. Go free the Konoha ninjas Kujaku and meet with me at the entrance of the prison. Yeah I know, said Kujaku before taking the keys as she watched Naruto leave. Be careful alright. Understood. Was Naruto's only reply. I really wish that guy would lighten up sometimes. Kujaku said as she freed the leaf ninjas. You guys not hurt, are you? No we are fine, said Kuranai as she looked over her team. Yeah I'm good said Kiba as he looked to Akamaru who replied with, Arf. I too am in good condition, answered Shino before adjusting his shades. M me T2, S sensei, stuttered Hanada. Kuranai had smiled at her team one more time before looking at one of their saviors, so what are you planning to do? First we need to get to Naruto at the entrance, before we can plan anything else, answered Kujaku before turning her back as she did not see the stunned look on the Genjutsu mistress face. Naruto. She can't possibly mean Uzumaki Naruto who vanished from the village eight years ago. Thought Yuhi Kuranai as she was among those who knew of boy's status among the village. A Anyo Kuranai sensei. Hanada asked as she brought the Junin out of her thoughts. Is there something wrong? Oh nothing is wrong. Kuranai lied as she looked forward. Come on everyone. We must get out of this place as soon as we can. Team 8 had finally caught up with the rescued townspeople as they were a bit backed up against the wall before the Junin walked up to the sword wielders. Is something wrong? asked Kuranai. Yeah, it seems like there are more bandits than what we were told of. Answered Kujaku as looked at the numbers of bandits. Looks to be about over 100 this time. So what's the plan this time, Naruto? Naruto did not answer her at that moment as he was looking over the bandits as he was trying to figure out how to take them out. If we had a powerful genjutsu user with us, then we could place the genjutsu over these people as carefully walk past them. However that will even if had someone to do this. Then the only problem would be not being noticed as there are bodies on the grounds and the blood would give away our chances of escape. He then turned his attention to team 8 for a moment before shaking his head. Your team has never spilled the blood of their enemies have they Kunoichi-san. It was more of a statement than a question to Kuranai as she knew he was right. No my team are just genin and they do not have the experience that you two have along with myself. I see. Said Naruto before looking back to the people. I hope it would not be trouble to ask your genin to defend the civilians while the three of us fight the remaining bandits Kunoichi-san? I believe they can handle that Naruto-san. Answered the genjutsu mistress before adding. And my name is Yuhi Kuranai. Very well Yuhi Dono. Said Naruto as he looked back to the three genin. I want you three to guard these people with your life while Kujaku, Yuhi Dono and I take care of the remaining bandits. With that said the three had went out into the battle with the bandits as Naruto jumped onto a platform above the left group of bandits. He then jumped down from the platform cutting through one man with his sword. Before kicking the body away to dash forward stabbing another person through the heart. As he drew his sword back from the dead bandit before swinging his sword to his left killing another one. Kujaku had just dashed forward into her group of enemies before giving a wide slash with her Soshokan as she killed five her men in the strike. However with her weapons added affect of wind, attack blew forward cutting through some of the enemies in her area. Before blocking an incoming attack from the right side of herself, Kujaku then gave knee kick into the bandit's stomach which resulted in knocking the wind out of him. Before she crossed her sword in a scissor-like fashion and cut the mon's head off. Kujaku then reversed the handles of the swords in her hands as she ducked her body to stab another bandits in the gut. She the did a sweeping low kick to make the two bodies of her dead enemies fall to the ground on their backs. As she saw a few more people running towards her as she grabbed her dual swords while doing a forward flip and threw the Soshokan into two of the head of her charging enemies before rushing at them herself. Yuhi Kuranai had taken the option of allowing herself to be surrounded by her enemies as she went through a quick chain of hand seals as she prepared her genjutsu that made her body vanish in the wind. However the group of bandits did not get the chance to figure out what had happened. As every one of them found themselves to be pulled into ground by dead rotting hands from the ground which resulted them in dying of fright. Once she had finished with her group of bandits, she turned around to see Naruto body appear and disappear within the group of enemies he had as flashed of light could be seen among the group. Within a few more seconds the blonde had reappeared behind the group with his sword had been mostly sheathed. But not fully until the group of bandits had fell to the ground into pieces of missing limbs on the ground with blood spilling out. Once that was done Naruto had finally sheathed his sword completely with a click. 
Before he walked back to the civilians they were protecting in the battle. The adults looked on in utter amazement at the level of skill the blonde had used in defeating his enemies. Kujaku also was to be recognized as a woman with beauty flows with the deadliest winds. Kuriani was also among the two to be seen as a savior to the people with her skill of genjutsu. XXXXX The next morning the Naruto with Kujaku along with the Konoha ninjas had made it back to the small town with the captured civilians in tow. They were spotted by a man who was standing guard outside the small gates of the town. When he yelled for everyone to see that their loved ones had been saved from the bandits. The rescued people had rushed to the people they were taken away from with some much joy. That group of saviors could literally feel the people's happiness venting out in the air. Team 8 along with Kujaku watched the scene with smiles on their faces, only for one to look on at the display of affection with an impassive gaze. He then walked forward with the others following him to see the man that had asked him for help standing in front of the people, Kazuma Akiyoshi. On behalf of our small town we owe a debt of thanks, Akiyoshi said as he bowed his head down in respect to the group. With it were not with the aid of the Konoha ninjas, Naruto started to say as he still had a cold gaze in his eyes. I believe that we would not have been able to achieve this victory. To this Akiyoshi had widened his eyes as he looked to team 8 before smiling at them too. Thank you so much for helping the Batuse and saving our loved ones, said Akiyoshi. You are welcome Kazuma-san, Kuranai said as she looked to be a bit tired from the battle to the journey back to town. I would it be okay if my team could rest for the day in town? Akiyoshi smiled as he saw the woman look tired, not at all. Please follow me. Naruto then leaned to Kujaku for a moment as he whispered something into her ear as she nod her head. I am very sorry Kazuma Dono, but Kujaku and I must leave now. Oh that is a shame as I feel that our village could honor you along with Kujaku-san with a feast, said Akiyoshi who sighed in defeat when he saw the two sword wielders shake their heads no, well you're welcome back anytime you wish to return both of you. With that Naruto along with Kujaku had left the town quietly. A few hours later, Team 8, Kuranai had gotten out of bed when she heard a light knock on her window of her room at the inn her team is staying at. To see a long purple haired Anbu with a cat mask on her face, she then walked over to the window to let the Anbu into her room for the night. Only to have her entire team inside her room with her friend before giving off an annoyed sigh. I thought you and your team were being held captive in a bandit hideout Kuranai, asked the Nako masked Anbu. We were answered Kuranai before preparing herself for the annoying part she was going to say as this was going to make her Anbu friend a bit of a fangirl. Until we were saved by a very unlikely ally. Who? asked a crow masked Anbu. Was it Suna? No, replied the Genjutsu mistress, it was. Hitakuri Batuse. Silence had filled the entire room before Nako looked to her team before saying. I want you guys out of the room so I can talk to Kuranai myself. When the rest of her team left the room out the window from which they entered, Nako then closed all of the curtains shut before putting up a silence jutsu in the room as she took her mask off and charged her friend. You met the Batuse. What was he like? Did you see his swordmanship? Was he better than Hayate? What kind of sword did he have? Yup, it is definitely not my night, tonight. Thought Kuranai as Azuki Yugo kept badgering her with questions as it was no real secret that the Anbu Kunoichi was woman who admired swords and a fan of Hitakuri Batuse. XXXXX days later, Hokage Tower, Serutobi Hirazan was looking over the members of Team 8 as they were recounting the day with their encounter with the legendary Hitakuri Batuse. To say that Sandame was shocked to know that Batuse had helped a small town in their country was an understatement. As he was well informed about the war in Japan and the rise of Hitakuri Batuse from the shadows. Along with mysteriously vanishing at the ending chaos of Bakamatsu which lead to others seeing him as dead. However rumors had traveled from Mizu no Kuni to the rest of the elemental nations. That the Batuse was seen fighting with the rebel forces of Kiri ninjas with their leader Terumi Mei. This left with so many questions in wanting to be answered by Konoha's own council along with other villages. As each one of them had sent spies to the Kirigakure no Sado to get any information regarding the swordsman. However it did not work out as any one of them is planned since the Batuse had left Mizu no Kuni. Now stood in front of him were the members of Team 8 giving their impression on their thoughts about the Batuse. As each one of them were very impressed by the swordsman levels of skill in combat. Even the elder Cage himself to be seeing the swordsman in a better light than what they stories told of him. 
as he was also impressed with the woman he is said to be traveling with by the name of Kujaku as her skills were just as impressive. However what stood out to Serutobi was the description of Hitakari Batuse had the cage in deep thought. Just then a knock on the door had interrupted the elder cage's thoughts as he told the people to enter. As Team 7 lead by Hitaki Kakashi had come into the room with his three genin being Shimura Sai, Haruno Sakura and Uchiha Sasuke as the top team. In what the civilian council's own thoughts actually is they seem to worship Sasuke. Ah you're right on time Kakashi. Said Serutobi as he looked at Team 7. I believe that your squad has earned the right to do a C rank mission this time. Sir. Kakashi started. I am not entirely sure that my team is not ready for C rank missions just yet. Oh. Said Sandame who looked curious for the moment as he was about to ask why. Only for Sasuke to interrupt his sensei by saying. HN, such weak mission are not enough to make me stronger and I need to fight stronger people. Sandame had sighed at the last loyal Uchiha's behavior and disrespect for everyone around him. All right then, I will let team 7 and 8 to do this one as a joint mission. Time skip. Kakashi vs Zabuza. Kakashi had found himself to be trapped by the demon of the mist Suiru no Jutsu, water prison Jutsu, as he found himself to be struggling for air. While Kuranai was busy fighting a Mizu Bushin by Zabuza to keep her from helping Kakahi. The members of both team found themselves unable to help their Junin senseis as they were facing off against a member of the Kiri no Shinobigatana Nananan Shu, Seven Swordsmen of the Mist. Damn, said Kiba, we need to think up a plan to save them? And just how are we going to save them from elite Junin? asked Sakura as she was getting scared, while Shino looked at the scene happening before them with a calculating eyes. I have a plan, said Shino, but I will need help from Sasuke for it to be successful. I don't need anyone's help to defeat a weakling like him, said Sasuke as he arrogantly pulled out a Fuma shuriken out from his bag and threw it at the former Kiri Junin. Only for the man to jump over the projectile while maintaining his jutsu. There went our chances of saving them, said Shino calmly. What do you mean? asked Sakura. I had seen Sasuke's Fuma Shuriken earlier before the attack by Momichi Zabuza. Said Shino as he kept looking on the battle. While in the time frame we have moments before Sasuke threw the Shuriken. I had came up with a plan to henge myself as extra Fuma Shuriken to ensnare the Nuke Nin. By changing back once he would dodge the incoming attack and from there I would use that moment to trap him with my own bugs by freeing Kakashi Sensei. However our window of opportunity has left us now. So you're saying it's my fault that our weak Junin sensei are going to die? Demon Sasuke as Shino made no further comment to the Uchiha. BB but T there must be BSS something we see can do T to H help, said Hanada as Sai kept silent. With Kuranai and Zabuza clone, damn it. She cursed as she was feeling the effect of a long drawn fight. At this rate I am going to dead in no time. You not kidding there said the clone as he used the mist to come out from behind the genjutsu mistress as it had a kanai in his hand as it was coming down to stab her in the skull. Kuranai sense, yelled the genins minus Sasuke and Sai as they watched the battle. However the clone was then cut in half by a gust of wind come from the right side of the clone as it dissipated into water. Kuranai looked around to see what caused the wind to cancel out the clone as it saved her life. She then looked to the right side to see a figure walking toward herself until she recognized the person along with her team. You're, she said. Kujaku san! exclaimed the members of Team 8 in excitement as the green hair and blonde banged woman smiled at the team. TT then T that WW would M mean. Hanada said as the rest of the genin looked off to where Kakashi is. With Kakashi, Zabuza, and Clone, it looks like it is time for you to finally die, Sharingan no Kakashi said Zabuza with much excitement in his voice. However he was brought out of his excitement when his Mizu Bushin, water clone, dissipated back into water. He then looked around to see a blonde teen holding a sword in his hands before he charged at him. Seeing no way around his current situation, he had let Kakashi out of his jutsu as he brought his own sword around and clashed with the blonde. Zabuza found himself to be pushed back by the masked swordsman as it was not small feat to do. Oh ho your good kid. I can say the same to you, said the blonde as he found himself in a battle of strength with the demon of the mist. You were able to wield a massive sword with swiftness as proof of that. Hey, thanks for the words, said Zabuza as he grinned at fighting such a man with skill. Tell me your name, I must know. Back with Kuranai, 
Team 7 and 8, Naruto-san, Kun, exclaimed the members of Team 8. Fats is the Batuse, thought Sakura as she looked at the blonde swordsman. Damn that blonde is ing hot, said her inner self. HN, I don't see what is so special about him, thought Sasuke. While Sai looked at the blonde like the others, so he is the legendary Hitokuri Batuse, he thought. With Naruto, Kakashi and Zabuza Zabuza took a moment to look at the blonde swordsman appearance while he had the chance before jumping back. Then his eyes had widened on looking at his opponent even more so. Before letting out a hearty laugh at the realization of who stood before him. Never in my life. Would I have thought that I would be facing off against Hitokuri Batuse himself. Naruto found himself in a test of strength against the former Kiri Anbu of the village he fought for. As was indeed told rumors of Momichi Zabuza from Chojuru in saying that the man is a master of stealth. However it was completely different from his own experience in Bakamatsu. Where he completely made himself out to be one with the shadows as if he became one himself before striking down his targets. However Naruto found himself against an opponent that had a similar experience like his own. Gaki. Said Zabuza as he looked into the cold eyes of the blonde. Do you know how much you have on your head? I see no purpose in having such knowledge, replied the blonde as he did not take his gaze off his opponent, but I am safe to assume that you are going to enlighten everyone around us. To this Zabuza had jumped back from the blonde in a safe distance away from the Batuse's sword while keeping his guard up. Hey, so far your bounty has risen in the last few weeks from 99 billion to 863 billion and I must say that you have the Yandaimi Hokage beat, since his bounty is now second below yours as both of you have an either kill on sight order or flee on sight in the bingo book. While this was going on in the distance between the two, Kakashi had heard every word that the demon of the mist just said as he looked at the long-haired blonde from behind. It was true that this swordsman had the exact hair color of Minato with a few faint streaks of red in the blonde. Even the kid's eyes looked that of his senseis when he was angered. As it finally hit him like a tone of bricks had fell on top his person. That he Zabuza managed to unmask the Batuse in this battle. He would see the whisker marks of his sensei's son Naruto before his very eyes. Kakashi had remembered the day that he was told that the boy had vanished from the village by another Anbu who seemed to sneer at the fact of the demon brat been taken care of. He then remembered the sick display at the villagers celebrating at the boy's demise. Even though he wanted to going down there and wanted to find the person responsible for the boy's disappearance so that he could shove his rakery through the person's chest as he made sure they die painfully. He had pleaded to Sandame to let him take a search party to look for the boy, as the team consisted of himself, Weasel, Nako and Tenzo. However such hope ignored because they needed their strongest ninjas in the village. To this day the copy ninja found himself even more seclusion than ever at his failures. The Junin was brought out of his thoughts as he heard the clash of the two swords men in front of him. Zabuza had swung his sword to the left while Naruto used this moment use his speed against the former Kiri ninja. As he had successfully dodged an incoming attack from the man. As he stood at Zabuza's right left side that was clearly open for an attack. The missing nin was the stabbed through the neck by a few senbons that killed him. Then a ninja wearing a Kiri hunter nin mask had dropped down from the trees to check over the body. Thank you for your help. Said the hunter nin as the person was about to pick up Zabuza's body only for a blade two inches away from their neck. I do not believe you are a ninja of Kirigakir, said Naruto coldly. You could be a threat and therefore, you should be eliminated. He saw the masked ninja started to shake their body in fear. However just as he was going to make the killing blow, a hand had grabbed his wrist to prevent his actions as the hand belongs to Hitaki Kakashi. That's enough now, he said in an almost commanding tone. The fight is over and this is no need for needless bloodshed. The blonde in question stared coldly at the copy nin for a few moments before sheathing his sword. I do not understand why ninjas of the elemental nations or your village in general fight the way you do in sparring the lives of your enemies, said Naruto in his monotone voice that is laced with confusion, before seeing the members of Team 8 running up to him with Kujaku having his own sword sheathed. This is our second meeting Yuhi Dono and Team 8. Yes it is indeed on good fortunes that you along with Kujaku-san are in the area said Kurinai as she was relieved to see the two once again. So what has brought you two here to wave? Well, we were running low on money in our traveling. Kusaku said as she let out a gloomy smile on her face. There was a town somewhere in Hino Kuni, land of fire, 
advertising about a bodyguard job from Gatu Inc. So we decided to head on over to earn some quick cash. However, we then had seen you fight Momichi Zabuza. Finished Naruto as he noticed the Konoha ninjas flinch at working for Gatu. I sensed that you were on a mission in Wave. What's it to you? said Sasuke as he looked furious at the blonde. Naruto, however, ignored the Uchiha, which only pissed the boy off even more so. As Kuranai then took this chance to speak with the two swordmasters. Maybe it is best that we talk about this someplace safe. Very well, Yuhi Dono. Replied Naruto as he saw Kujaku caught the copy ninja in her arms as he lost consciousness. It seems that he is suffering from chakra exhaustion. I'm surprised you know what chakra is, said Kuranai out loud as she saw the blonde gave her a glance, but did not give anything to that of an answer. Anyways, Tazuna, can you lead the way to your house? If Naruto would be kind enough to stay beside you and take the lead. All right, follow me then, said Tazuna as he walked next to the blonde. Time skip, Tazuna's house. The teams had made it safely to the home of the bridge builder of Nami no Kuni, Land of Waves. As Kuranai gave orders to the Genin to take make a place for the leader of Team 7 to rest. While she wanted to talk with Naruto and Kujaku about their mission in this location, to this Sasuke had demon that he should be present for this meeting, but was chewed out by the only active Junin in the group before he turned on his feet and left the kitchen. From there Kuranai had explained the two roaming people that Gatu was making the people in the village suffer by taking anything he wanted, which included children and women to be sold off as slaves to gain even more money. I see. Sid Naruto as he eyes had not changed one bit. Do you want me to kill him? To this Kuriani was amazed that the blonde in front of her could talk about killing people as if it were an everyday chore. What sort of person made this boy doing such acts? She mentally thought. To force a child to commit murder is just sick. Naruto saw the look in her eyes at his choice of words of killing Gatu, but decided not to follow up with any more. Have you come up with a strategy to defend the bridge builder from your enemies? Well, I can come up with something tonight, said Kuranai as she saw that Naruto's partner looked to be off in some other world. Is something wrong, Kujaku san? The dual swordswoman came out of her thoughts when her name was called. I hope not, but she trailed off as this caught the blonde's attention. But what? repeated Naruto. To this, Kujaku then looked at the two with a serious expression on her face. Normally, when a hunter ninja takes disposeze the remains of a missing ninja, don't they burn the body on sight and take the head back? she said to which Kuranai nod her head at the green hair woman. But that hunter nin that took Zabuza had taken his whole body earlier. The Genjutsu mistress' eyes had widened to what Kujaku was saying while the blonde closed his eyes before saying, so that means that Zabuza is still alive and will be coming back for Tizuna. With Zabuza Zabuza had grabbed the wrist of his apprentice as a had hovered over his wounds, before he finally knew where he was at the moment and what lead him to his current state. Damn! That Gaki is far better than what the stories say about him. He said before looking up at his masked apprentice. Did you have to be so hard when pulling those damn things out? Zabuza Sama! Said a soft voice as the hunter Nin revealed their face. Please stay still while I am treating your wounds, she said as she smiled a little at the demon of the mist. Why were you so afraid of that blonde swordsman? she asked curiously. Zabuza did not say anything at the moment as he remembered those cold blue eyes that looked devoid of human life. That blonde was him, he said as this did not answer her question. Hitakari Batuse. Hearing this made Haku's eyes widen as she too know of the swordsman who is like the avatar of Shinigami themselves. Are we going to be leaving then? She asked, hoping her master's answer would be yes. No, we need this job, said Zabuza as he looked up, in order to fulfill my ambition. To this, Haku did not answer the man before putting a warm rag on his face. Hi. XXXXX. Two days later, Kakashi had regained nearly all of his strength from the fight with Zabuza as he was helped downstairs by Kujaku. He was HPOING to have a warm breakfast to get started on training his students for the day. However, he was greeted with the scene of Sasuke demanding the blonde to teach him his sword skills. To which Naruto had simply declined the Uchiha over and over with a simple, no, for his troubles. The Junin then decided to intervene before his student does something that even he might regret. Oh hey oh everyone! Which got the Genin's attention along with Kuranai. Kuranai had told me what that you believe that Zabuza is still alive. He said which made the blonde nod his head. Well I do agree with your thoughts in the man being alive so. He trailed off as he looked to the genins. 
well we'll have to work on building up our chakra control. And just how is that is going to make anyone stronger? Asked Sasuke who is clearly irritated before going back to glare at Naruto. Because the more chakra control you can gain, started the blonde as he closed his eyes before continuing further, means the more jutsus you can us in depending on the situation in battle and could clearly tip the scales in anyone's favor. Correct Naruto. Said Kakashi as he smiled under the mask as the blonde the looked to his partner. I hope that it will not inconvenience you to watch after the bridge builder Kujaku san, said Naruto as he saw the woman smile at him. I'll be fine, she said, after everyone had went to do what they had set out to do for the mission. Naruto found himself with nothing to do at the moment as he had decided to rest for a moment. However that thought came to a halt when the door opened to reveal a short indigo-haired girl with pupilless eyes looking back at him. May I help you? He asked the girl when she eeped at his question. She then tapped her index fingers together while not looking at the blonde who looked at her with a curious eye. WW well I I ju TWW wanted to s say t thank you for SSS saving us. To this Naruto found himself without words as this was something entirely new to him, because in most of his life he did not know the meaning of being humble or any other emotions than that of a refined swordsman. You're welcome, he said in a tongue that did not sound like his own. Once he said that he saw the white-eyed girl leave with the door closing behind her, he then heard a small giggle coming from behind as it was only two of the only occupants in the house. The laugh belonged to Tsunami the bridge builder's daughter as she smiled at him kindly, which made him blink a few times at seeing something that brought a memory back to him for a few seconds. It looks like you have an admirer Naruto-san, she said as she sat across the blonde who looked even more confused than before. And, Adamer, he repeated which made the woman smile at him even more. You know, she said, someone that look up to you or likes you. Naruto did not say anything further as he could not understand the meaning of what it means to be admired. The people or in the elemental countries had greatly puzzled him to no ends. As he was a person who lived in a time of great war with the battles that never seemed to end. Though it was a bit different in these lands he now walked on. The blonde could not help that at some point in his life everything would change his views on the world. That night everyone had came back to Tazuna's house for dinner as Tsunami was having help with Team 8's Hayuga Hanada. To this the girl did not really mind doing such work as she really enjoyed helping the woman. While Kakashi at the time was going over something with Kujaku and Sakura in training her to become more serious in her training. While Kiba along with Shino seemed to be talking each other. Sai had decided to start drawing on his sketchbook, while Sasuke was glaring at Naruto with all the anger in his eyes. While the blonde in question just sat down with his eyes closed while having his sword leaned against Hylf's shoulder. Dinner had been set as everyone had taken a seat down to enjoy their meals that was made for them. Only for a small boy telling them that what they were doing is useless. Because to him it seemed like Gatu was invincible to which that no one could touch. However hearing the made Naruto get up from his seat as he walked over to the boy with his cold blue eyes. Before this mission is over. Said Naruto with a dark voice. Gatu's blood will be spilled and you will learn that no one is all powerful. Do not push your opinions on others because of your past experience. There are people in this world who have seen things you would never recover from and done things you will never be able to do. All for a simple dream. With that said the blonde had placed his sword back under his belt before leaving the house. Everyone found themselves to be interested in what the blonde mean by his words to Tsunami's son Inari. However when it finally clicked in their heads that the blonde mean himself. They noticed that their ally had left the house as Hanada wanted to go out and look for the swordsman. Only to be stopped by Kujaku who placed a hand on her shoulder. It's best we left him with his thoughts, said Kujaku. XXXXX the next day, Naruto, Haku had found a part of the forest where the rays of the sun shined down onto the grounds. However as she got closer to the area she had silently let out a gasp at the sight before her. That Hitakari Batuse was leaning against a tree as he had his sword leaned against his left shoulder. The bangs of his bright sun-ed blonde hair that has a few red streaks hang forward with his head leaned down slightly. She then looked over his face to see that he was sleeping. She then reached up with her hand to what looked like a choking position. However she stopped when she saw that in his right hand over his chest is a very beautiful pendant that hung off his neck and from the way he held the jewel. It told her that he greatly valued the object more than anything else in life. She then wanted to get a better look at his face when she reached up to pull the face mask down. 
However just as she was about to touch his black face mask down to see his face. Naruto's eyes had shot open before narrowing into a death glare as they saw a pair of pale hands reach up for his mask. With the skill he possessed he moved his right hand to the handle of his sword in unsheathing the blade to the person's neck. However once he got a good look at the person to see a girl looking the same age as himself with chocolate brown eyes looking at him in fear. Once he noticed that this girl had a frightened look on her face, he pushed her down away from himself. Naruto looked down to see what he had done to her as his eyes slowly lessen its death glare. I'm sorry, he said as he reached for the sheath of his sword. I didn't mean to startle you, Haku said as she looked off to the side. I wanted to see if you were okay. I'm sorry, repeated the blonde. You could have died from being out in the cold, she said as she did not get a reply from the blonde. Whatever happens to me is of no one's concern, he said a bit coldly. You should not worry about people that you have no ties to. Haku did not say anything to the blonde as she looked into his brillant cold blue eyes as they could tell that he had seen so much blood in his life. Well you must be strong to say such words, she said as he did not give a reply as he watched her pick some herbs from the garden before saying. Are these to get Zabuza get back to his full strength? Hearing this made her gasp at how he figured out what her purpose here was. How did you know? Your voice is the exact same as the fake Kiri hunter Nin. He answered plainly. Along with your hair color and height are the same. As I can also sense a fraction of his aura on you. Will you kill me? She asked as she too was afraid of the blonde in front of her who just stood looking off to the side. You know that you don't have to kill her. Said the fox vixen as she looked at the blonde through her own view of the world outside the cage. Unlike Bakamatsu, you have a choice to swing your blade. This made Naruto look down as if to look for an answer for a few moments before saying. Do as you desire. Because I still wish to face your master when he is back to full health as I know that he wishes to face me as well. After a few moments when those words were spoken she found her voice again after remembering what Zabuza had told her of him. You must be very strong to have survived the war in Japan. She said as he did not give an answer again. Do you have someone precious you care about? No. He answered plainly as if it was an order as she looked at him. You have no one that is most important in your heart? She asked again as his reply came back the in the same answer. No, he repeated. Haku then stopped picking herbs as she turned her attention to the masked blonde. People become truly strong when they are protecting something or someone precious to them in here. She said as she placed a hand over his heart. Even though she felt a little strange with the close contact she was having with the Batuse. Haku could not help but wanting to know more about him and how he saw life in general. I see no use for having such a person. He admitted truthfully at the girl beside him as she gave him a look of pain. I have never had anyone of what you speak of. Because things like that serve no value in war. He said as he got up from the ground before placing his sword under his belt. Wait. She called out as she was going to leave the area which made him stop. Would it be alright if we could meet here again tomorrow? She asked him as he turned his head to her as he looked in confusion. Why? He asked. Because I want to speak with you a little more. Haku said as he looked over her once more. She could no tell if the blonde in front of her was human as his eyes looked anything but that. It was looking into an endless darkness that no one could find their way out of. Okay. He said before going on his way back to Tazuna house. Later that night Naruto found himself sitting on the roof of the bridge builder's house as he gazed up at the stars. Why do I find myself not to strike her down? He asked mentally. But she is fighting alongside Zabuza. Should I kill her tomorrow? Deep inside his mind where the fox watched the blonde had a pained look in her eyes. Do what you truly feel is right. She said before she decided to rest. XXXXX over the next few days after their first meeting Haku had decided to show the blood her blood limit in controlling ice. A few times she even made a few small ice statues into things she liked in her life and every time before they left the other's presence. She would ask him the same question and having someone precious as his answer was always no but now it was the fourth day of the wave mission and saw the look on Haku's face as she looked to be struggling with inner turmoil. He then came to the conclusion that Zabuza will be at full strength tomorrow as he will go after Tizuna once more. Will you still fight Zabuza Sama? She asked as she looked at the trees. If he wishes to fight me. Naruto answered as he did not meet her body form. He has the pride of a swordsman as do I and we will have our duel on the bridge. You will have every right to hate me after I have defeated him. But why? She demoned. 
Naruto did not say anything right then as he began to walk past her when he silently said to her in a whisper, I'm sorry. The next day, Tazuna's house, Naruto had came back to the home of the bridge builder to see that Tsunami along with her son were being shoved out of the house by two poor looking samurai that he suspected to be working for Gatu. In hopes to make the Konoha ninjas to leave wave for their lives, Naruto was then brought out of this thought when he heard one samurai saying that she need to be shown her place. To this made the blonde's eyes fill with nothing but murdering the two fallen swordsmen. As he jumped down to the ground behind the two men. I will not allow you to disgrace the weapons you carry any further. Said Naruto in a cold voice that promised death. As the two men froze at hearing his voice alone made them shake. To see a 14 year old blonde as he drew his sword out. Why why you're him? Said the samurai on the left as he began to tremble in fear. The Batuse. He said as he let go of Tsunami. However the one on the right only grinned at the blonde. Hey. You don't look as good as they say you are. Said the man as he drew his sword at the blonde. And I don't think I need to be serious with you brat. Because once I kill you. I will become a legend as the one who killed Hitakuri Batusa. Ah. Was the last thing he said as he charged at Naruto who took a sidestep from his attacker and spun his body in a circle fast enough to gain speed. Before his attack brought his blade down before his head was cut clean off by the blonde spinning sword attack. The second man had drew his sword as well in his right hand as he swung his sword at Naruto. Who kicked his wrist away from him before reversing the hold on his sword so that way it pointed to the ground. Before he brings the sword back up in his hands as he stabbed the open samurai through his mouth and out the other side of his head. Are you unharmed Tsunami Dono? Asked the blonde who got a nod from the woman as she had just witnessed a boy who is a little older than her own son. Had just killed two men without mercy or any kind of remorse. Where are the others? They. She began as she was both amazed and frightened at Naruto. They went to the bridge this morning. I see. Was all Naruto said before he left to the bridge himself. The bridge Kujaku was facing off against the demon of the mist with her Soshokan as she was faring on even grounds with the former Kiri Anbu. Who lived up to his reputation of being one of the Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Nananan Shu? The man had a wide grin on his face at facing off against Kujaku in Kenjutsu. To this, it really amazed that a woman would be on par with his own skills. Though he did not know that the woman before him was keeping a few secrets about her swords. However, she knew that she had to fight without using her sword's food and abilities as she did not want to damage the bridge. Again, I am surprised said Zabuza as he swung his sword on the floor of the bridge in hopes to cut the woman down. Only for her to dodge the attack by parrying his sword with her own. She then moved to the side to let the massive blade strike the ground before she took a couple of quick steps on the Kubukiri Haucho and delivered a kick to the form Kiri Ninja on the side of his head. By what she asked as she landed on her feet, as she saw Zabuza DPI and his body on in doing a sweeping attack with his sword. Which she smiled at the attack as it made her duck under the massive blade. Just as she was going to kick Zabuza's ankle in hopes to make the man fall forward. However what she did not see in the the evaded attack was that his sword had embedded itself in the wooden floor and he kicked off from the ground in a spin upwards as he still maintained his grip on the sword's handle. Which it held his body straight up in the air for a few seconds. Before coming back down with the Kubukiri Haucho following his body. That was as hot as you used to be could handle a sword. He said as saw the woman's eyes widen in fear of dying while the massive blade came down upon her. Clang. After a few moments had passed by when she thought that pain was going to fill her body as she opened her eyes to see Naruto holding his sword against Zabuza's. Finally, he is here, though Zabuza as he was excited again. Everyone else had stopped their fighting on the bridge of as they saw that Naruto had finally arrived on the battlefield. Most were glad to see the masked blonde arrive on the bridge. While a couple had different looks on their faces as Sasuke looked at the blonde with greed in his eyes and Sai looked on with calculating eyes to read the battle. However Haku was torn between the two people she came to know. One being her savior in her days on the streets in her homeland, while the other seemed to attract her in more ways than one. Zabuza smiled as he brought his blade back to his shoulder as he smiled excitedly again. You have no idea, how much I looked forward to Todi. He said as he looked into the blonde's eyes. And I am a very happy man now. Was the last thing he said before bringing his sword down to strike at the blonde. Who moved fast enough to look like he had completely vanished from sight. What was that speed? Kakashi thought as he focused his Sharingan a little more at Naruto. I couldn't see him move, even with my Sharingan. 
could it be a new form of Shunshin Jutsu? Zabuza then swung his blade to his left side as he saw Naruto from the corner of his right. However just as when he turned his body with his weapon off to the side in one hand, he saw that the blonde had vanished again from his sights until her heard a voice say. Over here. When he turns his head slight to the side where his sword is raised in his hands. Naruto was standing on the flat side of the blade as he looked down on his opponent. Zabuza. Every Zanbatu weapon weapons only have an option of two choice to attack from the side or straight down. As it makes it a very easy weapon to predict when in battle. Naruto said before he charged at the demon of the mist with the intention to kill him. However just as his sword was going to connect with the former Kiri ninja's left ribs. Haku's gentle face came into his mind which made him slow down enough for his opponent to get in a blow to his face. As the blow sent him a seven feet away from his opponent. Kuranai looked at the blonde with confusion for a moment as she was going to comment on something. He hesitated before the attack was nearing the target. Shino said as he too looked on at the battle. Oi. What do you mean? Asked Kiba. He's the freaking Batuse, who never misses his target. How can his hesitate at a time like this? What's keeping him from killing Zabuza? Thought Sakura as she looked at the blonde who charged again for another Atka. Only this time it was a little slower like the before. This time however the older swordsman had attacked the blonde with his own weapon. Which made Naruto take a step back from the attack that came sideways from the left. But this time it had cut his face mask to the point where the whole thing fell off his face and revealed his whisker marks. It's him. Thought Kakashi as he thought that he was looking at the ghost of his sensei Minato. Kuranai also saw his face as she let out a gasp. So he is still alive. She thought as she felt something go up her spin. Heavens only know what she is going to do when the news gets around the village. No way, he is very handsome looking. Thought the only girls of the area as they saw the blonde's face. Great now I got more competition than before. Grumbled Kiba as he complained loudly. Naruto found himself not bail to kill the man before him as he kept seeing Haku with a sad face. It was like seeing an old memory of his when his master had passed away after their training was complete. Though no matter how much he tried to look at himself every day after that, he could still see the man's blood on his hands after mastering the final technique. Elsewhere, why do I have to go again? Answered a person who is clearly annoyed as they traveled through the trees. The other person is this voice as a woman's as she gave the first speaker with a light glare. I don't know why you're complaining. Since you never really do anything in the first place. You know what. Go ahead and go back home since you will most likely get in the way. The woman said as she smirked. What and miss the chance to see you throw a fit? Answered the man as he smiled again. The thrid person had sighed at the two people he is traveling with. Will you two cut it out now? Remember the mission is that we have to make it to wave fast now hurry before it's too late. Yeah, yeah I'm coming. Said the annoying man in a bored tone of voice. HMPH. Was what the woman said before muttering. I still don't see why he had to come along. Back at the bridge, Naruto versus Zabuza. Zabuza gave a quick thrust with his sword at the now unmasked blonde who jumped off the ground as he was inches above the massive blade of the Kyubukiri Haucho. Before stabbing the floorboard of the bridge in one of the sword's head holes for decapitation. Then brought his blade upward as he threw the sword straight into the air above as it went spinning. As he saw Zabuza watch his blade go sailing in the air which gave him the opening for one of his swordsmanship's attacks. However just as he was going in for the death blow, he hesitated once more. As this left him open for a kick in the stomach by the demon of the mist. What's wrong with you? Asked Zabuza as he stared off at the blonde who got up from the kick. Now is the legendary Hitokari Batuse hesitating to kill me. I know that you had me at some many turns but every time you slowed down. So why? Hearing this made Haku confused at what her master had just said. He is hesitating. What could be his reason for not killing him? Maybe it's because you don't want to kill me, is that it? Said Zabuza. Well I can careless about what going on in your mind. Since I will become an even greater legend for being the one to kill you. However just as he saw his sword laying on the floorboard of the bridge that was two feet away from him to his right. Laughter could be heard from the other side of the bridge as this made everyone look in the same direction. There sitting behind of over thirty thugs, sat Gatu who had a sword of his own leaning against his chair. Well Zabuza it looks like you have made my job much easier. What's the meaning of this you balding fat ass? Demanded the demon of the mist as he gripped his weapon as he saw the man smirk. 
Well you see I never really planned to paying you anything from the start. Said Gatu as he began to sneer at Zabuza. Not after finding out how much you go on your head. Along with the bounty of Batuse. I decided to let you have your deathmatch in hopes of letting you two fight yourselves tired or just plain killed each other. Then I would come on and cash in on the spoils of your bounties. After that I was going to take those girls with that came with both those Ninus and the one who came with you Zabuza. Along with the bridge builder's daughter looking very sweet as I can't wait to get a taste of her. Said Gatu as he was only seeing that as he won. So you only see the value of flesh and money in the lives of innocent people? Asked Naruto as the bangs of his hair shadowed his eyes. But wow ha 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 ha. Laughed the overweight man. It's just good Basinus. Now kill them. He ordered as the thugs for hire charged forth. Seeing no way out of this battle, Zabuza got into a stance with his sword as he prepared to fight for his life. However he then saw charge into the thugs before killing four people with a spinning slash. Which made blood spray into the air around the blonde swordsman drenched in the red liquid of his enemies before going on the attack again. This time four people threw kanai attached ropes at Naruto to which one he spun his body once more to get free. As he then unsheathed the wakazashi strapped below his normal katana's sheath before throwing it into the heart of a man that is standing near the rail. All the ninjas that are standing on the other side of the bridge could only do as watch as the blonde continued to cut through his enemies without any feeling of remorse. Even to the few that begged for their lives before being cut down by his sword. As the saw him stop in his path of death as he pressed the blade backwards into the chest of another thug how stopped from being stabbed. This kept going until he had went past the last two hired guards. Before they too dropped to the ground as blood started to form a puddle beneath their lifeless bodies. Until finally was a good distance away from Gatu himself as he held his sword in front of him as he body shook. What is he? He mentally asked himself as the blonde took one step at a time toward him. It's like he is the devil himself. No. I can die here. His thoughts screamed. I won't allow you to kill me. Yelled Gatu as he saw the blonde dash at him once as the speed in the dash kept him a few inches from the ground. Everyone had watched this go one in wanting to see what was going to happen to the businessman. While Kakashi had finally gotten himself out of his shock to race toward Naruto. To prevent him from killing Gatu in a means to protect the boy from losing any part of him that is human. However when Naruto was close enough to the Gatu who then brought his sword down in a straight slash down. The blonde had moved his body in a fluent motion to make him spin his entire body above the ground. Hidden Mitsurugi Ryu. Ryu Kan Sen. Naruto called out the attack as the blow that was meant from the back of the neck. As the force of the attack made Gatu's upper body fly off over the railing of the bridge as it fell into the waters below. The last thing the businessman said before being cut in half by Naruto was, he truly is a demon. When the battle was finally over everyone looked on to see that over the dead bodies stood Naruto. With eyes that held nothing but hatred as they gazed over Gatu's headless body. However Zabuza had came out of his stupor as he walked over to the blonde who turned his attention at him and seeing those eyes made the former Kiri ninja flinch. So it's all over. Said a voice from behind the blonde as he then averted his eyes to the newcomers. Naruto san I see that you are doing well for yourself. As he saw Chojuru along with Yutakata and a woman he had never really met at any time in his life. Great and here I thought that the blonde Gaki might be too much. Said Zabuza as he got his sword ready for a fight as Haku stood by his side. While Naruto made no movement to defend himself. Now I have to deal with you and her of all people. Ah. Said the woman as she bent her body downwards for the demon of the mist to see her bust as she smirked. Are you still sour that you lost at strip poker? Zabuza glare at the woman who has white hair as she was dressed in a black battle kimono that showed some over her hips. Along with some skin tight shorts that further caught any enemy male's eyes while her wrists are covered in medical wraps that went all the way up her arms. But the one thing that gave the woman her deadly looking charms were the large metal clawed fingers on her hands that looked like a gauntlet as well. And still a real bitch as always too. Said Zabuza. What the hell did you say you dentist case asshole? Yelled the woman as she had a tick mark on her face. Hearing this made the demon of the mist have his own tick mark. You heard me haihane. Yelled back Zabuza. Well. At least Naruto didn't kill Zabuza. Yutakata as he watched the man argue with the woman named Haihane. I guess that means the mission is complete. True. Agreed Chojuru as he smiled at his friend before he turned to Naruto. Mei-sama wants to meet you Naruto and she says that it is an urgent matter. 
so I need you to come back to Kirigakure no Sato with us. However, before Nerut had the chance to give an answer to the member of the Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Nananan Shu, Kakashi had stepped up to beside Naruto as he gave the Kiri ninjas a serious look. I am sorry, but I need Naruto san here to return to Konoha with us. Naruto found himself standing between the ninjas of Konoha to whom he was very familiar with in his early childhood, though it was a childhood he would not let anyone experience as he did in the ninjas of Kiri, who he helped liberate in their civil war. Our village of Konoha would like to give him a mission pay, said Kakashi as he hoped the boy would side with him on money, because the man named Hisoka Chukichi has a bounty on his head to anyone who kills him and it would greatly benefit you, Naruto-san, but you must come to our village to claim your reward. What I did back then, said Naruto as he looked at the masked Junin. I done on my own free will and not out of personal gain. I am not a ninja who answers to a single person or a body of government like most do, in the elemental nations. What I do is slay any person who abuse innocent lives along with those that create chaos. The blonde then turned his back on the Konoha ninjas for a moment before adding. I was the one who called for the two members of the Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Nananan Shu to aid me in this battle as I also had a secondary mission from the Godem Mizukage. H.N., they do not look that strong along with Yudobi, said Sasuke as he hoped to get some kind of reaction from the blonde, only to get angrier when Naruto did not even register his words. I am talking to you weakling. I don't think it is wise to call the Kiri Nins weak, said Sai as he finally spoke out as he smiled at Sasuke. I am pretty sure that do not want to be around a dick chaser like you, Sasuke-kun. But I thought that Kirigakure was in a civil war, said Sakura as she got the ninjas of Kiri attention. To this Haihane leaned herself against one wooden rail of the bridge as she crossed her legs. Sorry flat chest, said the grey-haired woman in a bored tone as she gave a smirk. When she saw the pink-haired girl's eyebrow began to twitch. But the fun, that was the rebellion of Kiri ended a little over a month ago. Kuranai then looked at the clawed woman after her eyes widened. You're the Shiruba Sume Akuma, Silver Clawed Devil, Haihane, said the Genjutsu mistress who saw the woman grin at her. Aha, so Konoha even knows of me, said Haihane as she lightly tapped her chin with her blatted finger. But I cannot be surprised by that since I am the only female of Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Nananan Shu. They are nothing compared to an Uchiha, sneered Sasuke as he closed his eyes for a moment, from a village filled with weaklings and most likely clanless nobodies. As that so little boy, said Haihane as he has Sasuke's in the palm of her clawed hand. And I heard that the Uchiha clan was the elite of Konoha. But to be killed off in one night truly speaks volumes of their strength along with one of their own doing it with no one knowing the wiser too. She said as she leaned in the Uchiha ear and spoke in a very airy seductive tone. Maybe I should pluck out those, oh so precious eyes of yours slowly. Haihane that is enough said Chojuru as he looked at everyone for a moment before his eyes rested on Zabuza. It's been a while Zabuza. Hey, if it isn't Mr. Confidence himself, said the demon of the bloody mist as he saw his fellow swordsman member sigh at the name. Are you here for my head? To this Haku stood herself between the Kiri Nins and her master in hopes to protect him, until Chojuru spoke once more. No, we have come to hopefully enlist you back into the village. This made Zabuza raise look at the swordsman with a glare for a moment. What about Haku? Sighs. The bloodline purge ended already no brows. Said Yutakata as he sounded very annoyed at the moment. Besides our new Mizukage has a bloodline of her own. Oh really? Wait a sec. Did you just say? Zabuza said as the information that has finally settled into him. I think we should talk on this in a private matter spoke Chojuru as he noticed that the Junins among the Konoha ninjas were listening in on them. Then looked to the female member of the Seven Swords for a moment. Haihane. I'm going to talk to Zabuza elsewhere. So do what you want and no killing anyone. Spoil sport. Replied Haihane as she saw Haku's body give off a few nervous shakes. What about her? I will keep her company. Spoke Naruto as he the high out in user relax herself. If that it is with Momichi Zabuza's approval. Zabuza then looked over to see that Sasuke was looking over the girl with eyes filled with greed. A leave her in your hands then, he said before he left with Chojuru. Four hours later Haku found herself looking at the ground under her feet as she could not bring herself to look at the blonde in the face. She honestly did not think like her normal self when she found herself in his presence, 
because he was not like any other person in the world because he was a complete enigma. One she could not fully understand because every time she looked in his eyes, she felt that within his narrowed gaze of death slept another part of Naruto. One who could be more than just Hitokuri Batuse, but a man who could truly smile at the world. Why did you not kill me? Asked Haku as she saw the blonde along with his partner stop in their walk. When you first saw me without my mask. I do not know that answer for that myself. Replied Naruto as he did not look at Haku. For reasons unknown to me. I find myself not wanting to take your life for reasons I do not understand. Under normal circumstances I would have killed you in our second encounter as a means to weaken Zabuza. However I found that I could not take your life as if doing such an act seemed wrong to do such an act. Hearing this made both Kujaku and Haku look at the blonde with a knowing gaze in their eyes, but could not tell the blonde in their presence what those feelings were, because they both knew that he needed to figure things out for himself, but could help in guiding him on the answer of his confusions. The trio came to a stop when they stood on the part of the bridge where Gatu's corpse used to be laying. To this Naruto looked at the spot as he looked at the very spot with his eyes glazed over for a moment. I do not regret my actions for killing Gatu, because he was a man that was too corrupt down to his very core. Should he be allowed to live another day, then I suspect that he will just repeat his crimes. Such a man does not deserve to live and should I be faced with the same option, I would still kill him. Is that how you truly feel? Asked Haku as she looked into the blonde's eyes to which he answered with a nod. No one can live their entire life killing others. Maybe someday you will come to an understanding of these words. There are people who are better left no knowing such things, replied Naruto coldly. To this Kujaku looked at the blonde for a moment as she was going to say something, when she felt a pair of eyes watching them from the distance, and now enter the ever so great Uchiha. If this is about your earlier demands in having me train you, then I am afraid that you are wasting your breath, said Naruto as he did not give Sasuke on glance. No, I want that girl, said Sasuke as he saw that unmasked blonde still did not look at him. Why? Naruto asked. Because she will be the future mother to the Nost powerful clan, that's why. Sasuke said as he looked at Naruto who then turned his attention on him. Will you hand her over or will I just have to take her from you? The blonde samurai then took a step forward at Sasuke who then activated his newly acquired Sharingan at his person, while smirking. You would also use people for personal gain as well? Said Naruto as he placed a hand on his sword. I am an elite and my eyes are proof of that, said Sasuke. Naruto then was about to take another step at the Uchiha, only to be stopped by Haku herself. Naruto-kun don't listen to him. He is not worth taking his life over. She pleaded with the blonde as he did not even turn his gaze to her. Please. Don't make your life all about taking people's lives. To this Naruto then finally looked at the Hyouden user as he saw genuine care in her chocolate eyes. As it made him calm down, only for a bit as it took his hand away from his sword. Your life has been spared for now. From you, yeah. Said Haihane as she came then shunshine past Sasuke as she appeared behind him with her left arm extended from her body as she let out a manic grin. But not from me. She finished as she watched Sasuke's raised hairs fall to the ground. Good now one has to look at you duck ass hair cut anymore. Why you crazy, Sasuke was about to say, if he had not noticed that his pants were cut along with his hair. As they were now looking more like bikini underwear for men. Everyone minus Naruto started to laugh at Sasuke's new look that was given to him by Haihane. The said Uchiha then ran back to Tazuna's house, while coving up the back area of his new shorts. I guess their oh-so-precious eyes makes up for the lack of other areas. Commented the Shiruba Sume Akuma as she saw the blonde continue his walk. Hey, cold as the highest top of Kuni no Yuki, land of snow, she then followed the three people again as she had nothing else to do. XXXXX with Zabuza, so how did she get the kid to join her? Asked the demon of the mist as he was trying to get every amount of information on his homelands. I mean sure, Mei did have supporters from within Kiri, like the bitchy nutcase Haihane. But how in the world did she persuade Hitokuri Batuse to join her? He finished as he was very curious on Naruto as also heard that the blonde took part in the Kiri rebellion. No offense or anything, but I can't see that guy doing anything for free. Chojuru just looked at his former Seven Sword member with a neutral look on his face. Believe me or not, but Naruto-san just joined us because he told us, my only purpose in life is best in the battlefield or in the shadows, is all he said. 
We knew who he was from his looks that our contacts in Japan had described him. So when he asked that he could join our forces, Mei San allowed him to do so and fought any battle that had the least amount of chance of survival. He said as he looked at Zabuza dead in the eyes. The kid really does live by the sword, said Zabuza as he smiled. I'm starting to like this kid more and more. He then looked out in the direction to the direction of Kiri. So the war is really is over. Yeah, replied Chojuru as he lowered his head, but not without its costs and discovered something not known to anyone else. Only for those on a need to know basis. And that is, Zabuza said. The seven swordsmen the raised his head to the fellow swordsman. Is that Yagura was placed under a genjutsu the entire time of the bloodline purge and my guess is that Kisame knew it during or found out about it. When the last coup as he, failed, to kill Yagura in the first place, remember. Hearing this made the former Kiri Anbu clench his teeth as he remembered the shark man saying that Yagura was too powerful to defeat. So that fisher knew all the time then. Zabuza asked as he saw Chujuro nod his head which made him more angered than ever. But decided to calm himself down by cutting a tree in half with one strike from his sword. Once that was done he then took a few deep breaths to get back to normal. So what happens to me and Haku? Well that depends on you really, answered Chujuro. Mei wants you to come back with us to Kiri and talk about what you want to do. From there along with that girl you have been traveling with, Haku writer we can kill you now. He finished in a very friendly tone of voice which made Zabaza's eye twitch. I wish he would stop doing that, it really creeps me out. Thought the mist demon before nodding his head. Fine we'll go with you, but what about the kid? Hearing this made seven swordmen raised his brow. What about him? He asked. You said that May wanted to see him for something important. Zabuza said as he was curious why she wanted to see Naruto. Oh that said Chojuru in his friendly voice again. Well, you will just have to come back to Kiri to find out. You're such an asshole, grumbled Zabuza. That night, Naruto along with Kujaku had decided to stay with the Kiri ninjas outdoors in their camp for the night. Though everyone had already eaten for the night as they were going to take guarding shifts for the night. Naruto was sitting against the tree as he watched the moon that is lighting up the night above them. Started to have a few vivid memory come back to his mind. Flashback. I never seen hair like yours. Said a child like Naruto to a faceless girl. It reminds me of XXXXXXXXX and it's pretty. Ah really? The girl said in a timid voice. So you don't mind XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
by yourself for that matter. Oh um well you see. Sakura said as she felt very nervous at being in the presence of Hitakari Batuse. As she remembered the reasons why she was out in the middle of the night. I wanted to return your face mask to you. She said as she held the black clothing in front of her as it was very done with great care. Naruto then looked at the cloth for a moment to inspect the black cloth. Shanu. Tell him that it is laced with one of Shino's scent bugs, said inner self as she watched the blonde. But if I do that, then we'll get in trouble with Kurunai Sensei and she is not the Ice Queen for nothing. Is there something that is troubling you Haruno-san? Asked Naruto as he saw the pink hair girl cringed a few seconds. Um, she replied as she looked away from the blonde before taking his face mask back from his hands. I was instructed by Kurunai Sensei to give that back to you, but it has one of Shino's tracking bugs sent in it, for reasons I do not know of. Naruto then looked at the retaken face mask in the pinkette's hands as she was shaking a bit and it was out of fear. The blonde seen this on numerous occasions when he faced off against someone weaker than himself. But for reasons unknown to himself, he decided to change the subject for her. I mean no disrespect or rudeness of any type. But what made you join the ranks of a ninjas for your village? Sakura then looked at the blonde for a moment as she blinked a couple of times. Well, at first it was to get Sasuke Kun's attention to notice me. She admitted honestly as she leaned then climbed on the wooden rail and sat down with her legs dangling. But now after we had a joint mission with Team 10 before coming here to Nami. I think everything began to change for me then. That I started to see my life was my own to take care should I be captured by the enemy. From there Sakura did not say anything further as she looked off to the distance. My mother tried to warn me in what I was getting into. But I was too much a naive little girl to listen to her and now learning what Gadu said after the battle on the bridge. I think it woke me up even more so than I thought. That would be a wise dection, said Naruto as he looked at the moon. There are things that you will not find yourself not agreeing with. But in time you will learn that there can be things far worse than you can even imgain. Things that you wish that you never want to see again, but they remain with us. However we must not let go of such things as these memories will make grow stronger in time. Sakura then turned her attention to Naruto as she saw his eyes looked a little pained at his own words. She was going to say more, only look at her for a moment. I will escort you back to Tazuna Dono's home. With that said Naruto began to escort her back to the bridge builder's home in a comfortable silence. While in their walk back to Tazuna's home, Sakura then took the scent bug that is hidden in the mask and crushed the insect between her fingers. She then gave the BACL face mask back to Naruto who took it back without question as he saw what she did. The next morning, Konoha team, Yuhi Kurana looked at the only female member of Team 7 with a disapproving look on her face as Sakura told her that she killed the scent bug. Sakura I am very disappointed in you for disobeying a direct order from a higher rank ninja. Said Kuranai as she watched the girl look down at her feet. But I am going to have to punish you for not. I believe that punishing her lies with me Kuranai. Said a voice that came from the side to reveal Hitaki Kakashi. I agree with you on placing a tracking scent on Naruto. But he is actually not in our jurisdiction right now and I think you are overstepping your boundaries in punishing one of my students. Kuranai wanted to argue at the copy nin but knew that he was in all accounts right about everything he said. So she then turned around to face her team and told them to get ready to leave. Kakashi however looked at his student and gave her an eye smile to show that he was not mad with her. Did I do the right thing, sensei? Sakura asked as she did not look up at him. What Kurinai said about you, disobeying her orders are true, said the silver-haired Junin. But that is only if you were on her team, however you were on my team and I really don't see a problem in what you did you should get ready to leave too. XXXXX four days later, Kirigakure, Naruto along with Kujaku were making their way to the Mizukage's office after entering through the gates. The blonde then noticed that Kujaku was really enjoying her conversation with Zabuza. Much to the annoyance of Haihane who just give any remarks that took the former Kiri Anbu down a peg or two. Deciding to ignore the older sword wielders, he then found himself looking to the side of a small open-air restaurant. He then made an objective for himself to visit the place for lunch as he required to have a meal when he needed it. The trip to the Mizukage's office was anything but uneventful for Naruto. As ninjas along with a few villagers wanted to shake his hand or ask him questions about his personal life. Though he was saved by Chojuru when he mentioned that Naruto was there on the Mizukage's order as this saved them a lot of trouble of being stopped by more people. 
Tarumi Mei sat at her desk as she was looking over a few papers that were of great importance to the village. As it could hopefully get things started in the recovery work that they very much needed. Then a knock on the door interrupted her thoughts on the future of Kirigakure. Enter, said Mei as she watched the team that she dispatched a few days ago come into her office. She then saw Zabuza enter the office with a young woman following behind him and lastly Uzumaki Naruto came in with his face being once again hidden under his face mask. Mei then smiled at everyone as she got up from her chair. I trust that there were no problems on your way here, said Mei as she saw Haihane and Zabuza glare at each other for a moment. While Kujaku smiled nervously while seat dropping on the back of her head and finally noticed that Mei had just now noticed her presence. And who might this be? My name is Kujaku and I am from Takumi no Sato. Kujaku introduced herself as she saw the Mizukage's eyes widen. You don't mean the village that makes special type weapons on the lands outside of Hai no Kuni, said Mei as she saw the yellow banged woman nod her head. The very same one, replied the dual sword wielder. I have been traveling with Naruto for days now, after my defeat to him. I thought I made a prefect sword in Soshokan, but Naruto just defeated me with no effort on his part. Mei gave a small laugh to Kujaku's story. Sorry for being rude Kujaku, it's that I can't really see Naruto losing to anyone. Hey, I thought you wanted to talk to me, yelled Zabuza as he was getting annoyed by the new Mizukage. What's wrong, I'm not enough for you now, spoke Haihane as she placed her bare head on the left side of her cheek. I thought I meant something to you before you left Kiri. I mean the way you kept screaming in the night and saying. I do not need to hear this, so I will wait outside. Naruto said as he was followed by Haku who had a blush on her face. HMHMHMHM. The Gaki could kill three squads of Anbu. Said Haihane with a grin on her face at the mention of killing. But he can't handle one story of a night of steamy wet hot. More like a night of S and M to be precise, commented Zabuza. You weren't complaining then, so what's got you all bothered now? Asked Haihane as she did not get a reply back from the man. TCH, you're so ing annoying. I'm out of here. With that said, the female seven swordswoman left. With Naruto, Naruto along with Haku were walking down the streets of the village as they took in the sights while Haku did as Naruto did not seem to show any interest in the things around him. Because he had pretty much killed people in different sections of the village and so he remembered the layout of the area. Haku then lead the blonde around the village so that she could hopefully get used to her new home, if Zabuza decided to stay. After a few minutes of walking around the village, the two of them came to a training area of Kiri ninjas. But just as they were about to leave the said area Naruto pushed the Hayouten user out of the way as a fork-like weapon zoomed past the blonde. As he moved his head to left to avoid another weapon that is a blue fan that had blades on it when opened. He then heard footstep approaching him fast as he drew his sword out and clashes with a metal staff with two golden ends on either side. In front of the 14-year-old blonde samurai was a girl looking to be at 16 or 17 years of age. She has dark skin on her as well as black hair that is tied up into two thick braided pigtails. She also wore a green face mask with a matching outfit that had black outlines. Naruto for his case pushed her staff back away from his sword as he kicked the girl in the stomach to knock the wind out of her. However just as he was going to make a killing blow to the girl, another blue fan shot past him and made take a few steps back. He then blocked a small sword that was inches from his face that came in from his left side with his wakazashi. He then saw another girl who looked the same age as the dark-skinned girl that he kicked moments ago. However then one was wearing a similar clothing to the previous girl, only her was blue instead of green. This girl had a pale complexion compared to the dark-skinned girl as she had brown hair. Naruto could not really say anything at the moment as he saw this girl makes the sword into a fan made up of blades. It was he Naruto nearly found himself off guard as the girl brought out another fan as it too opened up. This made the blonde move his katana down to his lower left as a means to block the second weapon. Which he did with success on his part, he then moved his body in a forward motion to use the girls on strength against her. The fan wielder then stumbled forward from her own momentum as she saw the blonde spin his body in a complete circle. Just as he sword was going to strike the girl in blue at the back of her neck. A pair of fork looking weapons stopped the blow from reaching the girl in blue. Naruto then saw another girl in a very revealing outfit of pink and black on this one. However this girl's eyes was yellow with black slits for pupils. That's enough. 
yelled a person from the behind the fighters as it was Haihane with an amused look on her face as she had one of her guantleets on. What is the big idea for you three to attack out guest in the village? The one dressed in blue along with the two other females hastily walked over to Haihane and kneeled at her presence. Please accept our apologies, Haihane sama, said the girl in blue, but we mistook him for an intruder in the village, as we have never seen him before. Haihane sighed at hearing the girl's reason for attacking the blonde as it sounded fair. Sigh. You three should be thanking me is more like it. She said as she got puzzled looks from the three girls. Because if I had not arrived to stop this little bitch slapping, I might have had to call the clean-up crew for you three and you would have been among the people that has fallen to the blade of Hitokuri Batuse. Besides it is a pain in the ass to even call the clean-up crew for you three. Finishes the Shiruba Sume Akuma as she then smirked at the girls whose eyes were widened at what they heard. And I bet some freak would love to get a part of you three dead or alive. The girl in green then walked over to Naruto as she bowed her head down. I am truly sorry for attacking you without reasons. Haihane then walked beside the girl in pink as she had on the most revealing outfit of the three. Naruto, these girls are my team. She said as she then looked over each girl. The one in green is named Jade as the one in blue is Katana and lastly is my very proud member of the team, Melina. Haihane introduced as each of them bowed once more to the blonde as he just nod his head. Well girls, I know you don't know an introduction. But well you already know who he is. You have no need to explain your actions against me. Said Naruto as he looked at each girl with his cold blue eyes. You homeland was in constant civil war that ended not too long ago and your actions to protect your home from invaders are well just. This boy. There is something different about him. Thought Katana as she looked at the blonde swordsman full form. He showed no fear of death when we were attacking him. But showed a determination to survive with his life. Naruto saw that the girl in front of him was in deep thought about something in his person. But decided not to question on her thoughts as it was not important to him as he looked at the female swordswoman. I thought that your presence was required to be at the meeting to decide Zabuza's future? Wait did he just say that Momichi Zabuza is in the village? Said Melina with her black slit eyes widened in surprise. Only for Jade and Katana to cover the girl's mouth with their hands as they were sweat dropping. Melina, you know how Haihane Sama gets whenever someone mentions his name around her. Said Jade to her teammate as she had seemed to forget something important. However it proved to be too late as the girls turned around to see their team leader giving them a crazed grin on her face. What. Did. You. Just. Say. Melina. Asked Haihane as she lifted her head to look at the team. And nothing. Haihane Sama, Melina said with fear before she along with Katana and Jade ran from the area. However just before they left the area, Melina winked at Naruto who blinked a few times in response. Just then Anbu had appeared on the left side of Naruto as he only gave the masked ninja his attention with his eyes only. Uzumaki Naruto, our Mizukage would like to speak with you as it is urgent. Said the Anbu before he vanished. Elsewhere in the village, do you have some sort of death wish? Asked Jade as she looked at the pink masked teammate. Remember the last time someone mentioned Zabuza in front of Haihane-sama? No, because there are men who are getting nurtured every day in Kiri. Melina said sarcastically. Of course I remember what happened, so I forgot about it back there, big deal. Because it is not every day you meet someone as deadly as the blonde cutie back there. Jade then looked at Katana with worried expressions on their faces. Melina. Please try not to get your hopes up again. Said Jade. Remember the last time you were with someone and everything was really going good, until. I know that already yelled Melina as she looked at her friends, I I know. Katana then walked up to the pink clothed girl as she placed her hands on Melina's shoulders, we're just trying to look out for you Melina, said Katana as she really cared for her friends, we want you to be happy, besides at least the last guy that you dated is not looking pretty anymore, not after what you did to him. Melina then gave a smirk to her friends, well he should not have dumped me like that, she told her teammates when an Anbu appeared in front of them. The Mizukage is requesting your presence for an urgent matter, said the Anbu before he vanished. One hour later, Mizukage's office. Naruto stood in front of Terumi Mei as she had a very pleased smile on her face. So Kujiku has become one of the Kiri no Shinobi Gatana Nananan Shu, said Naruto in his monotone voice as it did not sound very surprised at the information. Did she give any reasons why she decided to join their ranks? Oh I can think of one reason said Mei as she sipped her tea. 
but it is best not to gossip about other women. But I can tell you that Zabuza requested that Haku is to be placed in the Medic Ninja program, so that she would not have to see or do the things that he did at her age. Naruto did not give any sort of response to what she meant as he really did not care for the matter, the first part that is. May I ask why you have requested my presence? Asked the blonde when he saw the red-haired woman sip her tea once more. Is there a threat to your office that must be eliminated? The reason why I summoned you here is nothing of that sort Naruto. Said Mei as she gave him a serious expression on her face. But it is a mission that I would only trust to you along with hopefully a future secondary faction of the Kiri no Shinobigatana Nananan Shu. This mission might just determine the future of Kirigakir. Am I to be a guard for your ninjas? Asked Naruto. Mei then shook her head in response to the blonde's question. No, I want you to be the team leader for the mission. Said Mei as she rested her head on her hands. If the team manages to complete the mission with successful results, then I will give you a place here in Kirigakure and I know you refused the last time to join. But you have to understand that our village is desperate for allies and help from anywhere we can get it. I am willing to give you anything that you might request, so that you will join our ranks. Naruto did not say anything to the Mizukage as he knew she was right about her country. Because it was very much in a state of recovery at the moment and could be taken over by a stronger opposition or rebellion. What is the mission that you would have me do Mei Dono? Asked Naruto. The Mizukage's face then brightened up a little bit as the blonde wanted to know what the mission was. We should wait for the rest of the members of the team that will be under your command to arrive. Said Mei before there was a knock on the door to her office. Come in. She called over the blonde as the door opened behind the Batuse. Prefect timing. Naruto I would like you to meet your teammates for this mission. Naruto then turned to the door to see the three girls that attacked him earlier that day arrive. They do have impressive skills for combat as I have faced them earlier. When they thought that I was an intruder to the village and I will not argue further on your choice Mei Dono. Naruto said as he looked at each girl before looking back to Mei. Now may you tell us the mission details? The Mizukage then got up from her chair with a scroll in her hand before giving it to Naruto. I want you to give this to the Reikage, said Mei in her business mode. It is a scroll for an alliance with Kumogakir no Sado. Once he reads the scroll, I'm sure he will agree to our alliance. But if he does not accept it, then send a messenger hawk with the news and I will send another scroll with a better deal for him. Is that clear? Hi, replied Naruto, Katana, Melina and Jade before they walked out the door. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.